So I got the iPhone 17 Pro and I tested all the different video codecs so that you can see the actual difference between, let's say, the ProRes RAW and the normal H.265 in various shooting scenarios. The first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is ProRes RAW. With the iPhone 17 Pro, you now have the ability to record RAW video to an external drive. Now, what is RAW? In essence, RAW footage saves all the information your sensor captures and therefore lets you change things like exposure and white balance after the fact without losing any image quality. Let me show an example. Here I deliberately overexposed the image by a lot, as well as I also used a completely wrong white balance. And as you can see, the image is way too bright and cool. And while that would be great attributes for a human, not so much in this case. But here lies the real benefit of raw video. In post-production, in this case in DaVinci Resolve, I can just use the raw settings and dial down the ISO after the fact, as well as set the right color temperature and ta-da, we have a perfectly exposed image. Now, when we try the same thing in the normal ProRes, so the non-raw, and even though it was shot in log, which is already a flat image profile designed for maximum flexibility in post-production, there's absolutely no chance of recovering anything. And I can try as much as I want. I won't get the detail, the texture in the, in the watch dial back. So that pretty much sums up the appeal of shooting in RAW. In essence, you can mess up while shooting, but save everything later or put more professionally. You have more artistic freedom to have the final product look exactly the way you want it to look. Now, if you want to shoot RAW with your iPhone 17 Pro, you need a few things. Um, first of which is a fast SSD to capture video too, because it only allows you to, to write the RAW directly to an SSD. And I have this SanDisk SSD here, which you may have seen in the thumbnail. And I use that because I already had it. But if I wanted to buy something new today, I would probably uh, go with a more elegant solution. There are these SSDs out there that attach to the MagSafe um, of the iPhone magnetically. And so there's nothing dangling around, which is not ideal. Um, something like this one here from uh, Alexa, for example. Okay, and then you have to use either the Final Cut camera app or the Blackmagic camera app because you cannot access ProRes RAW within the normal camera app. Both of them are free to download and in addition come with many useful professional features like uh, complete manual exposure, focus speaking, histograms, LUT preview, and, and so on. And so here within the Final Cut camera app, for example, you can just switch between the different codecs and shooting modes. And when you choose ProRes RAW here, you can see that you can either use 17 by 9 or open gate. And this open gate thing is the second big feature of shooting RAW. With OpenGate, you basically get everything the sensor captures. Camera sensors come typically in a 4x3 aspect ratio, and the video we take is then usually only a part of the sensor. But with OpenGate, you get everything and gain a much taller image while not losing any width. This, of course, can be hugely beneficial if you want or need to use one recording and you know make clips out of it in different aspect ratios. 16 by 9 for example for YouTube and then something in portrait orientation for the socials. Now, especially when you don't need the open gate functionality, shooting RAW is not useful in every scenario of course. Like when you have controlled lighting like in this shot here, it's not really there's not really a benefit to it. Let me show you. Every clip you see here was filmed with the exact same settings and that is ISO 500 color temperature set to 5400 Kelvin, which matches my key light here, and um, the shutter speed at 1 50th of a second at 25 frames per second, and I use the main wide angle lens in each shot. So from left to right we have ProRes RAW, ProRes and H.265. Each was shot in Apple Log 2 and then in Final Cut I added a simple conversion LUT which converts it to Rec. 709 by Taylor Stallman as well as some exposure correction and contrast, but no sharpening or denoising was done. In essence, I just, you know, turned them into something I like and I'd use for YouTube, for example. Now, speaking of YouTube, um, they obviously compressed the files a lot, so I'm not sure whether you can spot any differences at all here, because I had a very hard time to notice anything on my monitor. Um, at most, I see a tiny, tiny bit more detail in the ProRes versus the H.265, but not really anything significant between the ProRes RAW and the ProRes. But 
that is also to be expected as in a controlled setup like this here, the raw has virtually no benefits as I obviously didn't have to change the white balance or, or the ISO afterwards. Indeed, I converted it from raw straight to Apple Lock and applied the same LUT and corrections as on the other clips. And while in this scenario it doesn't have any benefits, it does come with one big downsize and that is file size. With the ProRes RAW we look at a little over one gigabyte of data for 10 seconds in this clip you see. And the normal ProRes non-RAW is 700 to 800 megabytes per 10 seconds and the H.265 is just 38 megabytes per 10 seconds. So this is obviously a huge difference and surely one of the reasons why you can only write ProRes RAW to an external SSD. Because let's say on average for a 10 minute YouTube video with all the times I make mistakes and stumble across my words and so forth, uh, well, I, I'll probably let the camera roll, roll for about 30 minutes. That would equate to a whopping 200 gigabytes of data in the ProRes RAW. Now that's obviously quite cumbersome and also costly in the long run. And that's why for a controlled environment like this here, H.265 um, with Apple Lock is sufficient and way easier to handle. Now as a bit of a different direction, in the video where I compared the iPhone 17 Pro with the, my more professional camera, the Fuji X-H2, which is filming me right now, I said that ProRes footage from the iPhone looks nearly as good as from the Fuji minus the blurry background. So somebody pointed out that I should try cinematic mode, which I did. Right off the bat, we see that the colors and exposure is completely different compared to the graded log footage before. And that's because you access cinematic mode via the uh, normal camera app. And it essentially um, is the normal non-fancy iPhone video with an added artificial background blur and very similar to Apple's portrait mode, still photography. But yeah, having no control over the image whatsoever is obviously not ideal and it also comes with this typical nasty phone look with lots of over sharpening and not really much detail. And while it does blur the background and the blur itself looks quite natural, the transition looks horrible in my opinion and not at all professional. I, I mean, compared with the H.265 filmed in log and then graded, that looks way better in my opinion and that at roughly the same file size. So while I do think that there will come a time when we will have something like cinematic log in ProRes, for now the bottom line is that if I had to use the iPhone for my YouTube talking head, I'd most definitely use the H.265 and Apple Lock. I think for a scenario like this, it offers the best value in terms of file size to quality. Okay, now let's have a look at low light performance. And here I made the room completely dark and the only light source is a candle that illuminates the face of my girlfriend here. And this is a real stress test for a phone camera with its tiny sensor because while ISO 2000, which we have in this case here, might not be a big deal for a mirrorless camera with a full frame or APS-C sensor, for a phone it is a lot. Let's start with the ProRes RAW versus the normal ProRes and of course with the RAW we again have the ability to go crazy with exposure and white balance which might be helpful in a situation like this where it's really hard to get it just right in camera or in phone in this case. But provided you don't need to completely change everything I think that again there's not really a noticeable difference between ProRes RAW and ProRes Maybe again a bit more difference between the ProRes and the H.265 but also nothing really major and probably not enough to be visible on, on YouTube for, for you guys. And just for fun I also added my Fuji into the mix as a comparison and while it is obviously a lot cleaner the iPhone holds up surprisingly well especially when you add just a small amount of denoising and, and sharpening. I mean for a phone that's that's really good and again we are on ISO 2000 here so that is impressive in my mind. Then I also tested how the normal camera app would look like. So this is non-log just the normal H.264 in this case straight out of the camera app. And while it has a lot less noise than the ProRes and ProRes RAW for example because it does add heavy noise reduction already in the phone it also has a lot less detail and it looks like very boxy, chunky, not, not very pleasing. So it's there's not a lot of detail. So the bottom line here for me would be that for critical low light shooting I'd obviously choose the ProRes RAW, especially when you have the ability to denoise it in post. It just gives you the 
the most data to work with. Finally, let's look at slow motion. And the iPhone 17 Pro, as well as the 16 Pro for that matter, um, offer you the ability to shoot up to 4K 120, 120 frames per second in ProRes to an external drive. If you want to have even more slow motion, you have to go to the normal camera app again and use this dedicated slow motion feature where you can go up to 240 frames, but that is only 1080 and H.265, I believe. And yeah, it looks horrible. Just have a look at this side by side of this leaf in the rain. The ProRes 120 really, really looks stunning, whereas the slow motion mode is not usable in my opinion. I also made this very cinematic shot of this weird peanut candy, I don't know what it's called, falling into this um, bowl of milk. And the difference is less extreme because, you know, it is far less complex in terms of in terms of patterns and, and depth and so on. But still, I don't think that the 240 is really usable. But in general, man, I cannot stress enough how good the 4K 120 looks, especially in these macro-like close-ups where we have shallow depth of field with nice out of focus area that is 100% real. It's just really nice. I mean, remember, this is a phone and not a proper camera. So bottom line for slow motion, use the ProRes 4K 120. It is really, really excellent. All right, so what are my final thoughts? Well, first and foremost, the video quality coming out of this iPhone is amazing. Second, if you want to do anything remotely professional or, you know, you just want to get the most out of your iPhone, you need A, an external drive to record to, and B, you need to stay far, far away from the default camera app and instead do everything either in the Final Cut app or in the Blackmagic video app. So you can have manual control over your settings and access all the good stuff in terms of codecs. Speaking of codecs, my third point is shooting log in H.265 is a good quality compromise for probably most shooting scenarios, especially when you have control over the light, like a YouTube talking head video, for example. Then between ProRes and ProRes RAW, I would actually go for the RAW most of the time, as the size difference is not that big. I mean, both are enormous, but yeah, RAW is only like 20% bigger, so. But the thing is, of course, you gain open gate, which is helpful for all the influencer social media stuff, for example, and some sort of peace of mind that you can fix your exposure and white balance in post. Just be aware that with the ProRes RAW and OpenGate you lose uh, you lose stabilization and you'd need to do that in post as well. All right, I think that's it. That was a rather long video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Cheers.